Okay, let's do this. Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we are going to learn about the longest palindrome substring problem. There are plenty of ways, I mean, I'm not even exaggerating here, there are plenty of ways to actually get the longest palindrome substring from the given string. There is the brute force method, the Manneker's algorithm, and this one. The one which we're going to cover here, which involves dynamic programming. The problem is most of you probably don't know or are not aware of what dynamic programming actually is, or for that matter, what a palindrome is. So let's go down to the basics and think about it. What is a palindrome? Our friends at Google tell us that a palindrome is a word, a phrase, or sequence of whatever you want it to be that reads the same backwards as it does forwards. Example, the word madam, M-A-D-A-M. If you spell madam from left to right or right to left, it is the same thing. Another example could be A-B-A-B-A-B-A and flip it, exactly the same thing. That, my dear homies, is a palindrome. What is dynamic programming? Our very, very intimate friends at Wikipedia tell us that it is a method for solving a complex problem by breaking it down into a collection of simpler subproblems, solving each of those subproblems just once and storing their solutions, ideally using a memory based data structure. <sighs> yeah, okay, what? Exactly. Let's slow down a bit and take a look at it again. Solving a complex problem. Okay, that, that makes sense, kinda. By breaking it down into a collection of simpler subproblems. Okay, yeah, that, that kinda makes sense. Solving each of those subproblems just once. Oh. Storing their solutions. Ah. Ideally using a memory-based data structure, yeah. That is literally what dynamic programming is. Not repeating the steps that you have already performed by storing their results in some kind of a data structure, like a table or an array or like, you know, a linked list or a vector or whatever. Nothing fancy, nothing fancy, everyday stuff. Thanks, Wiki, I'll see you tonight, hee <laughs> hee. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's take a look at the bloody algorithm. I got a little British there. The shortest palindrome Longest. substring is basically the shortest substring that you can form from a given string. Uh-huh. For example, if you have a string like JK LOL LOL kidding, the shortest palindrome substring is basically K LOL LOL K. Uh, so now that we know what we're talking about here and, and everybody has some context, let's take a look at how this algorithm actually works. So in this algorithm, we maintain a table. Oh yeah, a table. That table is actually a multi-dimensional array with the dimensions of two. That is just a fancy way of saying that it's a two-dimensional array array which looks like a bloody table as you can see over here that table is literally and i'm not even kidding you're the crux of this entire algorithm now now why the table okay why the table as we have talked about before dynamic programming involves storing your previous results so that you don't have to calculate them ever again that is why the table is here to store those pre-calculated results. So let's talk about how the table works. Being a two-dimensional array, we can reference any of the cells in the table by a simple ij notation, i and j. i being the row that we can choose and j being the column which we will be selecting. Now and uh, now for the interesting part. How big is the table gonna be and, and what are the references from the table gonna be? That is where the string comes in. The string, the given string from which you have to extract the shortest palindrome substring is what the table entirely depends on. The length of the string decides uh, the size of the table. If the string is going to be of length 4, then the table is going to be 4 by 4. That means 4 rows and 4 columns. If the string is going to be of length 6, then the table is going to be 6 by 6. Each of the cells of the table denotes some permutation and combination of the string. If, uh, if you're talking about uh, the cell 2 comma 4 which is the one over here this one over here it denotes the letters which go from the index 2 to the index 4 all of them I'm not talking just index 4 and uh, 2 and 4 I'm talking all of them 2 to 4 of the string so if we generalize it I comma J on the table denotes the characters from the index I 
to the index j on the given string. So i and j can also be the same thing, right? If i and j are the same thing, then we are referencing only one letter from the string, which is obviously the index i or j. So uh, uh, we, we didn't talk about what the table stores, right? I mean, we know what it references, but we didn't know, we don't know, we haven't talked about what the table stores. The table stores values values of true or false. If the cell i comma j is true, that implies that the string from index i to index j in the given string, the main string is a palindrome. And if the cell i j is false, that implies that the string from index i to index j is not a palindrome. So it's that simple. It's pretty simple guys, not very complicated. If the table says that i j is a palindrome, then ij is most definitely a palindrome because it was already calculated. And you can basically now use that information in your algorithm to save you some computational resources. The logic is you start from the substrings, extracting the length one, store the results of whether they are a palindrome or not in the table and progressively increase the length of the substring you're considering using the stored data to accurately predict whether the current substring is a palindrome or not. Didn't understand that? Let's take an example. The given string that we are considering here is a b a a b c so let's create a table for that the table is going to be six by six as the length of the string is six pretty darn simple let's start from the substrings which are of length one okay which are of length one so single characters are obviously uh, palindromes right i mean obviously they are the same the same character either by being read from the left or from the right they are the same wherever you read it from so you don't need uh, so uh, basically you need your table to reflect that because no way in hell are you going to calculate that again okay single letter characters are denoted by i comma i being the same so it's zero comma zero 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4, and 5 comma 5. And as you see, we have set all of them to true because they are palindromes and the table denotes palindromes. And if you have i and i being the same, that reference is only one character in the main string. Deal with it. Now let's talk about the length being two. If the length equals two, we are talking about cells which are i, j, where j is i plus one because that because that is the index of the next character we are never going to have j being less than i because if that happens you are reading the given string backwards and we are not allowed to read the given string backwards homie yeah okay so the index is 0 comma 1 1 comma 2 2 comma 3 3 comma 4 and 4 comma 5 are what we consider here if both the characters are equal only then and only then would they be considered to be a palindrome because obviously they have to be read from left and the right to be the same in our example only 2 and 3 2 comma 3 satisfy that condition because both the characters 2 and 3 are a yeah hence your table gets updated and you move on to the next length the golden rule from here on end is that if you are considering checking the substring i comma j to be a palindrome provided that the d that i and j uh, the, the the length of those substrings is 3 because you already covered 1 and 2 then you check if the character at i and the character at j are the same as we did earlier and also if the value of the table location cell at i plus 1 and j minus 1 is true. If both these conditions are true, then you have a palindrome substring in your hands. And if not, you move on. Now, why does this work? Why? Why would it even work? I don't know. Let's, let's find out. For finding that out, let's consider length equal to 3. When the length is 3, you have the substrings formed which are from 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 5. By using the golden rule that we talked about, we realize that, hey, Hey, we only have to check the first and the last characters to be equal. The characters which are in the middle were already checked for in the previous steps and their results are already stored in the table at the cell locations i plus 1 and j minus 1 because that is those, those are the characters which, which come after i and come before j because they are in the middle, right? For example, if you want to check the substring 0 comma 2 to be a palindrome is a palindrome, then the character at 0 should be equal to character at 2 and the cell location 0 plus 1 and 2 minus 1 which is basically 1 comma 1 should be a palindrome right that is it should be true in the table in this manner we can use the already known information to make decisions in the future and that's how it works let's take a look at the code after finishing the slideshow Uh, 
so yeah, this is our code over here. It's it's not really very complicated. It's pretty simple if you think about it. We are declaring a string over here. We're getting the length of the string. We are defining a place to store the palindrome when we get it. We are uh, defining a length of palindrome so that we can efficiently pick it up when we find it. We're defining our table, which will basically store everything inside there. Uh, initially, we are assigning everything in the table to false because I don't want to have that problem of, I don't know, having garbage values because this is C++. C++ does all kind of weird things uh, when you define something in the memory space. Then here for the length of one, what I'm doing is setting everything, everything that is for the length of one, that is I comma I, as we saw in the presentation, to true and checking if that has the largest palindrome substring. If it does, then I'm storing it. Then I'm checking for the length of two. As, as we discussed, for the length of two, it's i and i plus one. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the palindrome. And then, then, then I'm doing the same thing, checking if that is the longest or the largest substring and just getting that palindrome in. And then over here, what we're doing is we're doing it for everything that is length of, which is greater than two. So k equal to two and k goes, k is basically the, the value which grows from two to something else to, to greater than two so that we can get that kind of width between the two i and j's and, and that's what's controlled by k. And i is basically just the increment of, you know, goes from zero to zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Uh, the strlen basically controls the length and uh, controls the ending of the i and j and, and that's about it. Uh, j over here will be i plus k as because um, j is uh, supposed to be uh, two, then your k should be also two when i is zero. So uh, it, it's, it's pretty simple if you look at it and, and here, if uh, the condition is met where the character, both the characters and characters are equal and the, the middle string, the string in the middle is basically a palindrome and that we check obviously by storing the values in the table. And uh, yeah, and if, if we get that value, if that is true, and then we have a palindrome. And if that palindrome is greater than the palindrome, which is already stored inside the table, then we set it to be uh, then, then we know what we're dealing with. And uh, to, to denote that palindrome, we uh, set the table equal to true. And that is literally it. it. It was a very long video, I know. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that was an incredibly difficult video to make. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be making more of these videos every week. Uh, and, and let's see how that turns out. Please share the video if you liked it. Um, please show this video in your class if you're having this kind of a dynamic programming class because it will be very helpful for me to get more subscribers. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I will see you in the next video.